Hello Internet, welcome back to our Cataclysm tutorial series. Last episode we went over some CBM stuff. Um, and yeah, we're, we're not super thrilled about the fact that we could not get our implanted night vision CBM into our body. What is interesting is that when I tested uh, for the last episode and I did the bionics installation, even at 10 first aid and 10 um, computers, I still had a pretty decent failure chance on certain things. So it makes me think that even if we upped our computers to level 6, we're still going to get like a 30 to 50 or 60% failure rate. So I'm tempted to just roll with the 70%, but we do have the ability to take computers up one more level, and we probably should do that before we try, um, just because we don't want to throw away free, we don't want to throw away a CBM that could have some value for us. At this, at this point, kind of sick of being in a lab. So what we're gonna do, obviously, the smart play is to explore every single floor of the lab, every, check every barracks, check every armory, every library, every prisoner containment, every CBM vault, pick up all the mutagen, pick up all the CBMs. That's great and all. I'm kind of tired of doing that. Uh, so instead of full exploring this floor, we're going to jump down a floor. Shouldn't have... Uh, why is my... Oh, I must have turned my flashlight off. This is just a tough zombie. I thought, oh no, it is a security zombie. Good, we haven't seen one of these yet. One of the more common zombies that you will encounter in the lab. Um, probably scientists are the number one. Security guards are up there as well. Basically, this is just a security guard in a lab. They're not super tough or anything like that. They do specifically reference that they're wearing a bulletproof vest. Unfortunately, like a lot of things in Cataclysm, they will have something in the description and then not actually drop that item. So there is a chance we will get a bulletproof vest, um, but it's not a guaranteed spawn or anything like that. So we're just going to shoot this guy to save ourselves some trouble because I don't want to deal with him. Did you drop Kevlar or anything? It did not. So there's uh, exactly what I was talking about. They can drop things like the... Zombie scientists? Uh, yes. They can drop things, I believe, like the... What are they called? The collapsible telescoping... Why are you... Oh, because safe mode is on. Um, the telescoping batons and things like that. So if you're looking for a weapon, they are possible to have something on them. But for the most part, they don't really drop anything of value. I would just like if they... You know, it's my opinion that if something says in the description that it has an item, then it should be a guaranteed spawn. Because the description, even though it's generic for every single zombie, it's not like each individual creature you come across. It, like It's not like every security zombie we come across has its own description. It's uniform between all of them. I still believe that you should not put something in a description unless it's a guaranteed drop. Because what I should be getting every time we kill this guy, because it references a bulletproof vest... I should be getting a bulletproof vest on every one of these. Now, if you don't want me to have that, for instance, if you just um, you want to put it on the zombie, but you don't want the player to take advantage of that, then it should just spawn as like completely destroyed basically every time at the lowest tier um, durabilities. Uh, like obviously these are very low tier durabilities, but you could put them to guarantee that they always drop with this durability, which means... Even if you butcher them, you're pretty much not going to get what you're looking for. Even if you clean it up, it's not. It's going to need to be fully repaired first, which is very difficult at lower durabilities like this. So there's a way to do it so that you're not just handing the player a free, you know, bulletproof vest. But I do believe that if it's in the description, it should be on the zombie. So not to get all, you know, I'm not salty about it or anything. It's just something that personally I think, uh, you know, I, I do a lot of complaining. People keep... Again, I mentioned this in the other episode I recorded today. People keep telling me I need to shut up and stop complaining, um, which is, uh, you know, a little upsetting. But I do think that there are things that are perfectly justified for us to complain about. So here we found the uh, cranial flashlight CBM. We, in, a in just the last episode, we used this item. It is previously was my like favorite go-to CBM. They have apparently reduced the vision radius. 
So like if I uh, come over here and I flip on my flashlight, you'll see it illuminates basically this entire room, uh, whereas the cranial flashlight would only extend to about this far. Um, it's not a very big radius, um, so it's not as valuable as a handheld flashlight. It's still super good for vehicle work and stuff, so we definitely want to take that with us. Um, that's a high priority, in my opinion, to get fixed um, and repaired and installed because that will give us the ability to, you know, just turn this baby on when we need to do a little vehicle work at night or butcher a corpse at night so we don't have to carry the first uh, the flashlight on us at all times. So just personal preference, I really like it. Um, your mileage may vary, of course. You know, it just depends on your opinions. It's a little bit of a scary room because we can't see all the way across the room. I actually don't feel like going in there because I don't want to risk getting obliterated by a turret. So we'll check here instead. Okay, some stuff smashed up. Another room we can't actually see across. Now, these various uh, broken windows, my brain says, okay, that's a turret shooting at enemies. But if we look back here, you'll see every window is blown out, and that's most likely a result of zombies. Um, so I feel okay stepping out here. It's not the smartest thing we've ever done. We did see an enemy there, just a regular zombie. Um, we'll wait until we get better eyes on it. Looks clear, so we'll proceed here. Obviously, the glass walls we would want to be careful with. Um, but again, I've been very reckless in this playthrough because I'm not super concerned about it um, at this point. Honestly, at this point, I'm ready to move on and start a different series. Um, but there's still stuff we haven't talked about. So, you know, I'm holding in there. I know a lot of people have been watching this series. Hey, if you're watching, thank you for watching. Uh, I appreciate it. I've certainly been getting better. So another turret room. Uh, we're gonna be very careful. Oh, it's already dead. Well, great. What killed you? Did I kill you? Were we down here already? Were we already down here? We may have been. I do remember killing a turret, I think, in this room. This, uh, room layout. And then to the north, there was another glass room. So this is not what I'm thinking of, because the room to the north of the one we killed in this was a uh was another glass room so what killed you none of the windows are broken i would have taken the bullets if it were me what killed this turret interesting we're obviously we haven't seen any other enemies anyway we can check this room now that we're in a better position Again, a little reckless just to come in here. Oh, yep, and I was just going to explain why these are not good rooms. So, there are rooms like this that have a fully functional regular generator. Uh, well, they don't function, they're just furniture terrain, basically. Um, this is actually a broken generator. And what this does is that it will spark and send out these electric fields. Now, if I wait a few turns, you'll see it sparked again very quickly. Now... I've complained about these at length. Basically, oh, it's cool. It's showing our temperature since we installed that uh, that um, weather CBM. It's weird that it's... Uh, why is it showing that to me when I have no bioelectric energy? Interesting. Anyway, um, this will spark very frequently. So if we just travel a little bit. More than that, it seems to almost... Again, I haven't experienced one of these in a couple months, so maybe it's changed. But previously, it would seem like it outright targeted you. Because if you just walked through a room like this, it seemed like, I would say, five times, six times out of ten, it would hit me. And it can be absolutely infuriating when you're just trying to walk across the room. I would recommend that if you're in a room like this, you pass very quickly through the room. Don't dilly-dally. And then, for the love of God, don't... Um, like use the hauling command and slowly haul a big group of stuff because it's going to spark multiple times every step you take and the odds of you getting hit are pretty good. Now this thing isn't going to kill us, um, but it definitely can cause us pain and damage and can be just god awful annoying. Okay, another CBM vault looks like or a mutagen closet possibly. Oh, it was a dissector that killed this dog. So let's check in here. Looks like another one. Uh, might as well use a little target practice. Actually, we're running a little low on ammo. I should have re... Oh, well, we did literally just pick up a crap ton of ammo. Let's unload this small belt. 
drop the linkages and reload our Stanag rag or Stanag mag reload reload and now we should have full ammo in our clips great yes that was easy so let's check this out see if this is a vault uh which vault this is it is the pe012 uh samples this is a mutagen vault so similar to the cybernetic vault that we saw previously except that this one will contain some mutagen um, I really don't use mutagen in the game, but just to show you, because we haven't seen one before, we'll go upstairs and grab our uh, jackhammer, which is charged, so we don't have to wait for it to be charged or anything. We do have to hoof it back upstairs, which is a bummer, but what are you going to do? Uh, from here we go... What? Oh, what happened to this wall? Why? Why is everything... What's going on here? Why is there rubble, rubble and things? What happened here? Oh, you know what? I bet the 50 cow on the lower floor actually destroyed some terrain which collapsed downstairs and left these holes in the floor. So that's not great. We definitely don't want to fall. So we'll leave those be. Anyway, let's just get out of here. Um, I think it's north and to the west is the stairs. So we'll head over that direction. I'm just going to pop up here, grab our trusty jackhammer, which, as much as I've complained about it, has done a lot of work for us. And here it's going to give us access to some mutagen. We haven't done an episode on mutagen. I'm very hesitant to do one because I don't know the system as well as I know the cybernetic system. Um, you know, with cybernetics, you have a lot more control over your character because you can decide what you put in your character and what you don't. Let's drop... Uh, some stuff to lighten our load here. Go ahead and drop the ammo belts, the loose rounds, keep the jackhammer, keep the... Drop this, drop this, drop this. Uh, how's our flashlight doing? 37. Let's throw this disposable battery in it. Let's go ahead and unload flashlight. Reload the flashlight with the disposable. Uh, disposable, and we'll drop the other one. Uh, I wish it would stop dropping things on the ground. Drop the other one in the charger to be charged in the future. And we have a jackhammer. Yes, okay. So, head back down, crack into this. Yeah, so CBMs, you have a lot of control, right? You decide what goes in, what doesn't go in, um, which ones are worth trouble, which ones are not. And if you really take your time and you think about what you're doing, the odds of you getting really hurt or having bad things happen when installing CBMs is very low. Um, it's very unlikely, you know, it gives you a flat percentage, very obvious numbers on whether you'll succeed or not. It's not like it's some mysterious number that you don't actually know ahead of time. You can plan around it. You can raise your skills to, to get the best possible outcome that you can manage to get. And so there's a relative amount of safety that comes with that. Unfortunately, mutagen does not work that way. Mutagen is a complete crapshoot. Uh, on whether or not you get what you want. Uh, smash this, please. Actually, don't smash with your gun. Uh, go ahead and smash with the spear. Who cares? It's a spear. If it gets destroyed, I don't really care. Its bash is terrible, as we have learned previously. Uh, oh, we did smash it. We just can't see there for some, because we're light blind from the stupid terminal. So wield the plank. That will help us smash a little bit more efficiently. Come on now. Okay. Man. Okay, re get our stamina back. And again, we don't know if there's a turret in here or not, so we're going to jackhammer in on a diagonal. Um, actually, stop drilling. I would like to bring this locker. Ooh, we should have checked the locker. It has a first aid kit in it. Uh, we're going to bring this locker. Let's clear these items out of the way. We're going to bring this locker over. That way, if we do get in a situation where there's a turret in there, we can just block the doorway and not have to worry about it coming back. Unfortunately, stopping mid um, drill actually used up half of the battery charge. So that's really annoying that uh, we didn't actually succeed and yet it ate up all of our charges and did not save our progress. So let's flash here, check. No, no turret, which is good news. So we'll pop in here. Earth sign serum, feline serum, Feline Serum, and Mutagenic Serum. Um, so Mutagen comes in a few flavors. There is uh, Standard Mutagen, which is always going to have the word Mutagen in it. Um, it will say uh, 
for regular mutagen, it will just say mutagen. For serums, it will say mutagenic serums. This is the catch-all. This can give you basically any mutation available to, you know, any of the other classes. Then you have these uh, specific, basically, categories of mutations. So if you take feline, feline mutations have a certain associated set of mutations that you can get. Ursine has a different section of um, mutations that you could pot potentially get. Now, there may be some overlap between multiple categories, but they're only going to give you mutations in that category. So if I take a feline thing, I will only get feline mut mutations. I won't get fish mutations, right? And then there's a difference between mutagen and serum. Mutagen will give you like one mutation. Serum will give you like three mutations. So I think it's a range. I don't think it's a just one and three. Uh, but for the most part, you're going to get around three with serum. Um, and they're more potent. Not only that, but there are things called thresholds. You need a serum to cross a threshold. It's complicated. I don't know a lot about it, but that's a really crappy basic overview of, of mutations. And you have no control over what mutations you get, right? You literally, there is no, nothing in the game that you can do to increase or decrease your chance of getting a particular mutation. It just is. The only thing is at character generation, you can take robust genetics, which increases your chance of getting a good mutation. It doesn't guarantee that it's good. You can still get bad mutations, but it increases the likelihood that you'll get good ones. In general, I don't take robust genetics. Even when I do, it seems like I get crappy mutations a lot and I really don't enjoy it because there's no control and so many of them are very bad and completely change the way you have to play the game. And I just don't enjoy mutations, so I uh, can't really give you great advice about it. My recommendation would be if you're going to do it, take robust genetics. And honestly, if you're going to do it, you really have to be okay with getting a lot of garbage would be my takeaway. So not much in here. Interesting room layout though. Just a glass jar and some nitric acid we don't care about. Keep exploring, more smash stuff. Again, obviously a zombie smashing here. We can even see him. So we'll pop in here, murder that. Oh, we're still wielding a plank. Give me my gun back. I think this is the most zombies we've seen on a floor so far. We haven't really seen any anywhere else. Um, I don't necessarily need to shoot these guys, but I'm going to because it's a lot easier. Mechanical whirring? I don't know what would be causing that. We'll look into that in a second. Someone is mowing my lawn. I swear to God, every, like, three days when I try to record, someone is mowing their lawn. And, uh, I get it. It's like 80 degrees, but, my God. Okay, so an angry robot. Extremely dangerous. Um, the unmanned ground vehicle. We're gonna we're gonna stop recording, by the way, to, so don't get all upset about the the lawnmower in the background. This is a UGV. It is an unmanned ground vehicle. It is an angry robot. The important thing to note here is that he has an M16 um, and has bullets in his M16, uh, which he is more accurate than we are, and he will very likely kill us if we walk into this room. Um, there's really no great way for us to deal with one of these at the moment. The best thing we could do is uh, if we could install this freaking night vision thing, we could get him from outside of his vision range and kill him. We don't have that opportunity at the moment. So instead of engaging him, I'm going to back out. Those guys are pretty good. They can be harvested for their M16 if that's something you want. Um, I don't care about them too much. You will see them in the world in various places. In labs, they're pretty common. They're also pretty common in bank vaults or around bank vaults. Um, when enemies set off alarms, there's a chance that, uh, like if we fail to hack a panel in the lab, there's a chance those guys will spawn right next to us, which is uh, obviously a very deadly situation. Can't open doors though, last I checked. So we're not in any real danger as long as these doors stay closed. Um, and we're going to probably mark this uh, this is not a riot bot. This is a um, secu bot. So we'll mark that. I think I'm actually just going to call the episode. We're at about 20 minutes. Um, and it sometimes takes them like 40 minutes to mow their lawn. So I'm just going to bail. So for now, thank you for watching. Sorry for the short episode. Hopefully you enjoyed. 
hopefully, I mean, that wasn't a very good example about mutagen and whatnot. We'll talk more about it in the future, but I just do not feel confident teaching you about it. So, okay, that's going to do it. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.